Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? One of the things I think is important, and not necessarily just whether or not it's in therapy or prescription drugs or anything, but life in general is like trying to understand your core values when it comes to healing. Yes. Because I think healing is all of these three elements that you talk about. How does one understand what it is that they know and what they're trying to understand? about well, who they are and their core values? It's a great question. There's three stories that I believe we're always trying to negotiate. And this is what I've observed from working with patients, specifically cancer patients. There's three stories we're always trying to negotiate. And that's that story that of design, right? Laws of nature, things that are self-evident and speak to our natural affections. There's this story that says something inside of me wants to live. And we have an anatomy that bears witness of that. And then there's a story that we tell ourselves from our experiences in our soul, our mind, our heart, our will, our conscience, our feelings. There's that narrative we're always trying to negotiate. And then there's a story that we carry in our DNA. Our stories don't begin at home. They begin in the home of the home of our parents, parents, parents. So three, four generations deep, there's a work of recall healing and Dr. Hammer from German New Medicine expounded upon by Dr. Gilbert Renald, recall healing, that really speaks in powerful ways to that. So there's a story of that, of our very constitution substantiated and well explained by laws of nature, things that are self-evident again and speak to our natural affection. There's the stories we tell ourselves from our experiences and the ideas and the thoughts that we got from our families of origin and our experiences. By the way, starting from conception and in the womb and our first formative years of life and throughout, and then the stories of our anatomies. And I think reconciling those three stories is where we find incredible freedom. For example, with you, Michael, something in you knew intuitively that, oh, I don't know, this isn't right. So you used all kinds of means and methods and resources to silence that, to mitigate that, to reconcile that. And they weren't productive. So at some point, you decided, you know what, this is not for me. So I'm going to just bring an end to it all. And somehow, as providence would have it, you weren't successful in that attempt. Call it whatever you want, divine intervention, chance, accident. I think it's because look what you're doing now. I think it was divine intervention personally. But then you have, these, you have the reality of the heritage that you bring to bear and the legitimate experiences that, you, that are in your tissue. The issues are always in the tissue, right? tissues and that are very real and the disparity between this hunger of your soul this thing of what's happening in my life right that you're negotiating through these experiences you have and the trauma that you're bringing in from these generational patterns right the disparity between those things is where we find the anatomy of disease and addictions and all these things so what happened at some point you reached bottom and i love how you address that and you talk about the reaching rock bottom that rock bottom is really a beautiful and wonderful and great place to be and we were talking about this a little bit ago because there's nowhere else to go but up if you can just accept that hey this is rock bottom for me whatever that is for you individual or for a listening audience if you can recognize hey there's only one other place I can go from here, and that's up, right? Because I can't get any lower than this. We all have different margins, right? But then you begin to decide, you begin to choose, you begin to dig, you begin to learn, you begin to turn every stone, you begin to reach out, like you were talking about earlier, looking for mentors, looking for information. We have the web now, we have the internet, we have YouTube, we have amazing resources at our disposal, we have amazing counseling, amazing podcasts to listen to. So there is no excuse why we have to give in to the disparity of whatever situation we find ourselves in. Nobody takes our life from us. We give it away.
Yeah. And what I'm curious about, I have this thought, just this question just popped into mind. What do you think is the biggest misnomer or misconception that people have about their own mental health? That it's inherited, that there's no way out without medication, that they're the victims of circumstances. I think the biggest, I think the most tragic bit of information that people believe are the lies of why they find themselves in the situations they find themselves. I think people don't realize how powerful they are. I think people do not understand that thoughts have power and words have authority. It's one thing to have thoughts that are limited, but it's another thing to begin to speak them into being. Words have power. Thoughts have power. Words have authority. We have to be very careful about the things we speak. We're better off asking questions, seeking information to get us out of situations that we find ourselves in than we are to get together with a friend over a beer or a glass of wine and continue to complain or we have very sophisticated ways of complaining, right? Fancy and sophisticated ways of complaining, but it's tragic because those would seem like nominal conversations are relatively insignificant, just shooting the breeze with somebody. They have devastating consequences in your entire constitution and in your life. 